are witnessing a new technology. Way before Star Fox emerged on the Super Nintendo, featuring our bushy friend Fox McCloud, there was another game to bear the Star Fox name. Well, actually there was more than one. But this review is going to focus on one specific release developed by Real Time Game Software and published under Areola Soft's Reactor label in 1987, a German publisher which initially began as a subsidiary of Areola Records and by 1993 would become part of Microprose. The same year our Super Nintendo release would arrive. You might be forgiven for thinking that this is actually a predecessor to the Star Fox we're all familiar with, especially given the similar gameplay. And of course the fact I slapped Fox McCloud all over the thumbnail, but it's not at all. Rather than being thrust into the Lilac system, this game is set in the Hyturian system, but like its future namesake has you thrust into a ship surrounded by a wonderful universe of vector graphics, which unlike other platforms are solid in this C64 iteration. I mean, can you even call this a vector? Probably not. It's at this point that I wonder why there are so many games, and things in general, which bear Fox in their title. And indeed, the name of Star Fox builds upon two earlier games Areola Soft published, Sky Fox and Arctic Fox, hence why we see the words, The Fox is Back, emblazoned over the cassette insert. Although for some reason the Commodore 64 North American release of this game broke form and went under the title of the Rubicon Alliance, most likely because this was published by Datasoft Incorporated in that region. Talking of name changes, this game isn't the reason that the 1993 Star Fox was renamed Star Wing here in Europe. No, that's apparently due to how similar Star Fox sounds to the German company Star Vox, especially when pronounced in a German accent, which I won't do here. Star Vox, Star Fox. So, onto the game then. I have the Commodore 64 tape version presented in a double cassette box, but held only on a single cassette, a method which helped draw attention to games in the sea of titles strewn in computer shops of the 80s. A thin instruction manual and a black sheet offering some amendments for the Commodore 64 version are also included. The rear of the package reveals the year is 2746, and after many centuries of internal bickering, invasion and counter-invasion, broken or dishonoured treaties, the eight planets of the Hyturian system had found themselves embroiled in full-scale unwinnable war, every planet at war with each other. Finally, a mixture of good sense and sheer exhaustion prevailed. The eight planets hammered out an alliance which not only prevented interplanetary war, but also the best brains in the system constructed a cubic barrier of antimatter around the entire system. This was the Rubicon, and for many decades the peace remained undisturbed. That peace has just been shattered, the Rubicon has been breached. It's up to you to save the system and find out how it happened. And like many of these 1980s game blurbs, the grammar is pretty appalling. Also, like the 1993 Star Fox, the story is fairly similar. There's war, and we're here to sort it out. In many ways, I get the feeling that the developers of the later Star Fox were probably quite familiar with this version. Although gameplay-wise it is very different, and this feels more like a cut-down Elite or Star Raiders game than the familiar railed 1993 shooter. You certainly won't be able to do a barrel roll here. Although this does look like it's actually doing a barrel roll. There are eight missions to cut through, each at a somewhat sedentary pace. Your mission task is outlined at the start of each round, usually involving destroying a number of enemy ships in your trusty Star Fox ship, after which you can then journey to the edge of the Rubicon Cube to be handed your next mission. The ultimate goal is to find the new ninth planet known as No-No, which has infiltrated your Rubicon defences and annihilate the base of the Star Thugs. And yes, that is the actual name of a race you're up against. 
During the missions, you'll need to watch out for electron and ice crystal storms, as well as refueling, which you can do at any of the star docks which orbit the eight planets. You also need to locate the planets to begin with, but once you have, they remain as a fixture on your holographic map, which actually works quite well for navigation purposes. You can then use wormholes to move from place to place, although hitting the edge of a wormhole, if that's even a thing, will damage your shields. Overall, it's quite an engrossing game once you get into it. There are times when the pace can be a little slow, especially when you're hunting planets, but that's all part of the charm. Space life isn't all run and gun, you know. It's clear the program is new this though, and the manual offers an immediate hint to find the first two planets, to deter people from chucking the game directly in the bin or perhaps giving it a bad review in Zap Magazine. Weapon selections and upgrades help to keep interest high, along with the ability of the enemy to adapt to your upgrades, Captain, they've adapted. offering some further strategic elements. And the whole thing feels like a neat little package, delivering you directly into the Hyturian system. So if you fancy some elite style action but without the extra baggage, then plug in your 64 or Spectrum and grab yourself a copy of Star Fox to soothe your interstellar desires. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, watching an other video or helping support me through Patreon. In any case, have a great evening.